that'd be great. All right, I better go because I'm filming. Bye. Lisa DeFazio here. I hope you've got a minute because you're about to meet Joe Morris. Joe Morris is one of the great unsung heroes who has um, campaigned and championed the cause of street art in Melbourne. So we'll meet him now and we're at my house. So let's go. Thanks for coming and meeting me today, Joe. Uh, you are um, or were heavily involved in street art within Melbourne, is that correct? Yes, yes, it all started back in uh, or oh, probably about 1990. Okay. Uh, I, I came in working for an organisation called Victorian Association of Youth and Communities and uh, there was, there was a, a committee being set up by mm -hmm. the City of Melbourne to work with kids who are into the graffiti scene to try and look at some sort of legal side of that, recognising the fact that uh, uh, it was happening, a lot mm -hmm. of illegal things were happening and uh, so we was looking into how we can change that. Mm -hmm. uh, we got together this committee mm -hmm. and uh, and started looking at organising. Melbourne City Council did something different to us. We went talking to the uh, Minister of Transport right. at the time uh, to, to say, uh, you know, what can we do about this? The kids are out there painting trains, mm -hmm. tagging walls, tagging fences, yeah. all of that sort of thing. Uh, which uh, the community decided they didn't really like. So mm -hmm. whereas young people can rebel in one way, which is acceptable to the general community, this was not acceptable to the general community. Mm -hmm. You also get to that point where young people say, but if I'm advertising uh, Kellogg's or something, I can put up advertising yep. signs anywhere I like. Nobody complains about them what the advertising mm. people are doing. And it was all to do with permission, I suppose. Uh, when we, we actually took some young people who were involved in painting trains, mm -hmm. uh, we went in, talked to the minister and said, if you want to stop this or, yeah. or cut it down or something, one of the ways to do that would be to uh, provide some funding for the Victorian Association of Youth and Communities to, to run a legal project. And so they would come in to our office they would bring with them a letter from somebody who had a wall that said oh, that brilliant. Uh, so these you're, you're legitimizing can, it. Yeah, so yeah. these people, young people could paint something on their wall, whatever they wanted to paint. Um, so that, that went on for oh, about two or three years, in actual fact, at that time. And, and there was a review done on it and about the project and it had lowered the amount of graffiti on the, wow. on the transport system. Oh, look, we will pay your young people to come and do some art mm -hmm. on this wall. Uh, so, so that became a very great difficulty for young people to make that. Again, how, how do you split that sort of thing? It's all right here, but it's not all right there. And okay. it's all to do with, you've got permission to do this, you haven't got permission to do that. Right, okay, interesting. And, and so there was that real dichotomy for a lot of them. Mm -hmm that they got involved in it and didn't, didn't understand that. Well, it's, it's mm. no doubt very complex as well, so, mm. yeah. Well, it is because for them. Yep. They were paying exactly the same thing. One they got paid for and people said, oh, isn't this good? Another thing is they did and people were supposedly saying, this is terrible, should never have happened. Right, You know, okay. lock them up, send yeah. them, you yeah. know, yeah. find them, all of those sorts of things. So, so with the youth, because mm. it was mainly youth, wasn't it, that you were working yes. with, yes. how did they come to you? How did that sort of happen with your organisation? Well, it really started through this Melbourne City Council uh, committee that was set up. Mm -hmm. And the police were involved in that too at that, at that point mm -hmm. in time, trying to help also. Some police were anyway. Yeah, and, yeah. And so, and, and so that, that's how they came. And then the word just got around. If you want to paint a legal painting, mm -hmm. go to it was called VAYC mm -hmm. on a on a Friday. Take your letter. They, they, we gave them paint at that point in time, mm -hmm. and you can go and do it now. And so that that's and that obviously grew and developed. Mm. 
um, you've also helped a lot of those um, young people to avoid court and having records and things like that, haven't well, you? That's well, weird. basically that was really what we were also trying to do, is mm. to make sure that, that these young people would would uh, not get a, a record that yeah, in later it's... life is going to sort of come up and say, but you've got this police, because in Victoria they don't, they don't wipe them off, you see. Right, okay. In some it... states they do wipe off police records, but mm -hmm. in Victoria they don't. So you could go for oh, a job yeah. or try to be And a, it will come up. Whatever. And that limits you and so it, much, hmm. doesn't it? Because there's yes. a lot of things you just can't do. Yes. Um, I suppose from that point of view, you say what, what, what the whole project did, hopefully to some extent, mm. was to uh, help them get through that period of time uh, and, and not get charged. Um, did you find that a lot of the kids had similar backgrounds or were they from all walks of life? Or? Well, they were from all walks of life, but I, but I probably think the vast majority came from the eastern suburbs. Oh, really? Mm. Okay. Most people thought, no, this is uh, kids from the western suburbs who are, you know, yeah. causing trouble. Most of them came from the eastern suburbs. Uh, kids from all... Walks, walks of life. life. All schools, private schools. We went, as, as a number of them have done, they, they went to uh, BCA, Time College of Art. Right, yep. Uh, some went to Monash uh, and did courses there in, in art or curating yeah. or oh, whatever. Brilliant. Quite a number, of, well, a few also became tattoo artists. Yep. Uh, yep. And are around doing that. Uh, there's uh, a or went into other branches, you could almost say about so it's yeah. a, at least one or two run restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that one of the restaurants used to have a, a cap, one cap. Oh, wow, well, really? Yeah, and, so have any of the kids that you knew sort of continued on with their careers and actually become artists? Yes, that's right. Peter Daverington, uh, mm -hmm. who, uh, who has uh, twice Thank been in the finals of the Archibald. Oh, brilliant. And, uh, in so was he from Melbourne? Yes, yes. Right. In 19, uh, 19 I think 13, 14. So there was a um, portrait done of you, like a... Yes. I was working for another organisation called the Yarra Dragon Health Forum. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, who was not a young person anymore, somebody I presume he'd be in his late 20s or early 30s, mm -hmm. actually saw me going in and out of there right. working and uh, was speaking to a, an artist uh, that he'd seen me. Mm -hmm. And so the, this artist said, oh, I'd like to do a painting with him. Oh, wow. As, because he knew as, that you had a, championed yes, the, yes, the street art course. Right, Don't yeah. be so humble. <laughs> No, well, really, it's, I mm, mean, because mm. you probably helped, I don't know how many people, and it also helped transform what Melbourne is today. I mean, mm. those, you know, Hosier Lane and all that, they're touristic destinations now. They are so embraced and promoted. So where was your portrait? It was in uh, Rose Street. Mm -hmm. uh, and sadly, so been, been due there to for about 12 months. Oh, I months, missed it. I like can't that. believe I missed it. And uh, it was in Rose Street, just up from uh, uh, Brunswick Street. In the, so near where the market is, near the Rose market. Street Very market. Close to the market. Wow, Very close which to is the another market. great sort of corner yes. where they sort of do a lot of work. Yes, yes, yes. That. I heard also um, that some um, artists did something really nice for your birthday, one of your birthdays, your 50th. Oh yes, he painted in my... <laughs> <laughs> surprise, set up by your yes, wife, Julie. Yes, yes, at, uh, <laughs> on the garage wall at our place, yes, that was really interesting. Or something that I find interesting is um, there's that huge mural down the Clifton Hill end of um, uh, Smith Street. Um, yeah, somebody has gone over it. Yeah. Someone with these giant letters and then yeah. there's been a response from that and then they've reinstated parts mm. of and, and I love the dialogue that it can create. Mm. Yeah, I find that really interesting and yes. 
Isn't it? Isn't, yes. But you see, that, that some people would say, or some of the writers would say, there's absolutely no respect at all for the people who... who well, it's a shame that because that, that needed work anyway. Mm. It had yes, faded to the right. point that it was mm. no longer was a beautiful thing to look at. Mm -hmm. um, so what it probably done was, you know, mm. create a little catalyst where it had to be dealt with, and I'm sure that they'll overhaul mm. it completely. And I also heard that when a lot of the um, street artists came from overseas, from New York and Germany and so forth, they would want to meet you, which is lovely. Oh, there were some of those, yes. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. so fantastic. Mm. That's cool. Thank you so much. Okay, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you. I, like to yep. Talk. Yep, I that's always fine. say I, I don't know anybody. And, uh, <laughs> You're probably one of the coolest well, connected guys around. <laughs>